You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. And I heard a noise and looked up and across the uh, edge of the uh, the beaver meadow, there was a black bear coming out of the uh, line. Of sh- and as soon as he saw me, he um, he started to accelerate towards me. And so he kind of did his mental checklist. Okay, I don't have food. It's not a, a female with cubs. Um, I didn't bump into it on a trail. It, so it's not a defensive reaction. It's, you know, it's a predatory attack. I'm standing up there waving my arms. You know, I'm 6'2", and, you know, trying to make myself look big and just roaring at it, not facing him at all. And uh, then he, I see him crouch and he looks like he's going to jump over the stream. And so I back up a couple of paces. I don't want him to land on me. And he jumps across. And so I let him have it with a bear spray at about a meter and a half, two meters. So he's right there. And he gets it in the face and he jumps back over the stream. And so I stop spraying because there's no point in spraying his retreating butt. And then I run back to where I'd left my, my bag and I put it, my gear away and I pull up my Leatherman. I had a, a little um, a multi-tool. Uh, normally I carry a, a big uh, blade knife, but it, it was on my other pack and I was too lazy to transfer from pack to pack thing. Oh, you know, what are the odds? I, never, I don't need this. And I pulled the Leatherman, I picked the blade and I just thought to myself, God, this is so puny. <laughs> and, um, and the week before someone had been mauled a couple of hundred kilometers from where I were. And I'd heard it on the radio and they were talking about, he survived. Uh, he was saved by some passerbys after this bear had basically pulled him out of his cabin and was scalping him in the ditch. And, and he was describing how the bear was biting on his head and you could feel the teeth. And I was going, man, this has got to go well. Cause you know, I wasn't so much worried about dying, but I don't really like pain. And then we are, we're like a meter and a half apart. He's on the other side of the tree. I'm trying to spray him. I'm holding out the can of bear spray on one side. And then I would hold the bear spray out to try to spray him. And then he ducked to the other side of the tree with his head. So we're going back and forth and back and forth. And I could see we're so close that I didn't have my arm fully out because I was worried that he would knock the can of bear spray out of my hand. And I could see that he, one of his, his right eye was half closed by now from the bear spray. And so we do this back and forth. And it's almost comical that, you know, the stakes hadn't been so high. And finally, you know, I timed it right and I sprayed him right in the face from like a meter away. And some of it just blows back into my face and I get some of it into one of my eyes with blisters. Um, and then he drops in and, and backs off. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.